Cat-Powered UFO is a bizarre turn-based RPG. It's a very strange game that doesn't fit into a box. There are turn-based fights, but they're not straightforward. The NPCs you meet are beyond weird, with one of them having a football head. Now, maybe I'm dating myself here, but it was not Arnold. They literally had a football head. I didn't have time to find out why. I was too busy trying to save my wife from the space devil. The game is not taking itself too seriously, and yes, there is an element of humor to the entire game. I didn't have any laugh out loud moments, but I did enjoy Cat Powered UFO with a smile. I enjoyed all the kooky things the game threw at me. Maybe I'm giving this away too soon because you should see these fights, but if you're looking for a short game to play, then I'm going to recommend it. Anyway, did I say Space Devil in the intro? Yes, I did. That bastard took your wife and is keeping her on Space Hell. Your only goal is to collect 10 cats, which is enough cats to power your UFO to fly there. Right now, your UFO can't go anywhere. You'll need to collect a cat before you can even travel to the slime dimension. Then it takes four to travel to the ice dimension, and so on. There are six planets to explore, but five of them are tiny, and they only have one cat each. The first planet is the biggest and most complicated to get all the cats on, but you will need to visit the other planets before you can get all the cats. As you might expect, the main character is driven to find cats from anywhere they can. They're willing to do some horrible things to save their wife. Truthfully, I don't understand how the UFO is powered by cats, but it is, let's just go with it. And I'm assured that no cats are harmed in the process. It seems like they just hang out on your ship and that's enough to get you places. I don't see the harm. Well, actually, as someone who lives with three cats, it seems pretty great. If they can get along, then more cats the merrier. You can see it's like a cat party in here late in the game. They really need to catify this space though. They need some scratching posts or something. Keep in mind, you can't just get a cat. You'll have to be given a cat or find a cat somewhere. And cats aren't all hanging out in the open. The gameplay is focused on solving problems. I mean, yes, your cat problem, but also other people's issues as well. As a vague example, you might land on a planet where someone is willing to trade you a cat for an item. Note, I'm using the word someone here very loosely. And okay, so that's fine, but to get that item, you'll have to get past a different character blocking your path. Well, they won't budge until you go visit a completely different area with another character who will teach you how to move them. This is kind of how the entire game is played out. There are many ways you might accomplish a goal. For example, picking up an item and delivering it, defeating many opponents in battle, or winning a foot race. Ah, wait, that was a little confusing. There's only one set way to accomplish your goal, but there are many paths in the game. These are just a few small examples of what you might be doing to solve some problems in Cat Powered UFO. Battles are the only mechanic that appear frequently in the game, and while it looks like a typical RPG battle with menus, it is not. When seeing these mechanics, the first thing that comes to mind is Undertale, it has to be. Your first option, Attack, requires you to complete a mini game per fight. So if you're fighting an accountant and you want to break their pencil neck, you'll have to punch a pencil in half. Yes, it is that ridiculous. Although if you punch the pointy end, you'll end up taking damage. Now, most of the game relies on timing. As you can see, the pencil isn't making it easy. I won't say the mini games are difficult and the game offers a lot of opportunity to heal and become more powerful. I've made a few mistakes, but since I never died, I think I can say the game is pretty easy. But it was always fun to find out what the next battle was going to be. The second option you can perform is the disrespect to your opponent, or you tease them. Yep, you're going to hurt their feelings, but it will tilt them, which means they'll attack less. They could become tilted instead of attacking on their turn, which is nice because it makes the fight easier. 
Two problems though. The first is setting these up every time is a little tedious. I probably didn't have to do it for every fight, but I was working on a no deaths run. I'm a very conservative player. You start with one disrespect action, but by the end of the game, I was applying all three. There's a little mini game that is the same every time. So yeah, I grew tired of doing the same thing over and over and over. Second problem is that it's pretty easy to dodge the enemy attacks. You have to run around a platform and stand on one that stays white while the others are smashed by an anvil. I'm sure I could have successfully dodged any attacks thrown at me or dodged enough that I wouldn't die. So looking back, maybe I wasted my own time on these problems and that's on me. I do wish there was a little more variety in these mechanics specifically though. Moving on to the third battle option, which is Psych Up. You slap yourself to increase your critical strike chance. Again, this is something I felt strongly about doing every fight, so it was a little tiresome by the end. And that's pretty much it. You make your way through the game, getting more and more powerful, collecting items. Some items help you in battle, while others tell you how many items you can collect on the current screen. They're all helpful, it's just if you have enough money to buy them. Although the game is very generous and lets you refund all purchases. It's kind of unbelievable that they let you do this, but I guess because the currency is limited, it is the right thing to do. The game is weird. The items are unusual. You're not sure which ones are gonna work for when. It's really polite that they let you do this. Makes it nice. Now players don't have to stress over where they're gonna spend their hard earned chicken nuggets. Oh yeah, chicken nugs are the currency of this world. No big deal, what else did you expect? Before wrapping this up, I just wanna point out that this is a short two to three hour game, but expect longer if you wanna find all the cats, which I did not do. There's also a hardcore mode if you really wanted to extend the game. Overall, cat-powered UFO is good. One of those oddities you come across every once in a while and wonder why it didn't take off. Some of the sequences do drag on a little too long, but nothing to turn me away. After helping my wife escape capture, I even considered collecting all the cats. This is a short budget game that I really enjoyed and I recommend it to anyone. Thanks for consuming this video. I'm trying to catch up a little on the games I missed last year, so subscribe and you won't miss any of those videos when I don't miss those games. That's how this works. See ya.